Hey guys, welcome to All Electronics. I'm Gregory, and in this video, we are going to explore the idea of impedance matching network design using genetic algorithms. Take your coffee and come with me. Well, guys, I started this side project here because I was studying. PA design, power amplifier design. And one of the keys of power amplifier design is presenting the correct impedance for the current of the device, the active device. So we have the transistor. Let's see here. For example, in a class J amplifier, we have the current in blue. This is the current of the transistor. And the trade-offs between linearity, efficiency, and output power comes from the combination of current and voltage we use. So in this example, we have the excitation current in the drain of the transistor here in blue, and we need to present the right impedances for this current so we can generate the correct voltage. So power amplifier design always comes to the conclusion that we need a robust way and an intelligent way to design impedance matching networks. Because is the impedance matching network, here we have an example, that will transform the fifth ohm load in the correct impedance for the transistor. We need a way to design and to optimize very complex impedance matching networks, impedance transformation networks. For any type of class of operation, A, A, B, B, J, A, F, for any class, we need to present the correct impedance at the fundamental frequency and also in the harmonics. Because for example, in a class J amplifier, we are trying to optimize the second harmonic to have a second harmonic voltage boost, and we need to align the correct phases of the voltage and the current to have the correct efficiency and the correct class of operation. In a class F amplifier, let's see here. In a class F amplifier, we need to optimize the odd harmonics, the third and the fifth harmonic, to generate a more square wave voltage function. So for a class J, we need to optimize the second harmonic impedance. For a class F, we need to optimize odd harmonics of the fundamental, third and fifth harmonic impedance. So this is not only a problem of impedance matching. We need to cover different impedance for different harmonics. And my idea was, why we cannot use genetic algorithms to optimize a network to find the best values for the network. And this is what I did here. And this source, this is only a prototype, okay guys? And this source code is available on Patreon. You can support the channel, having access to all my simulations and files, becoming a patron of the channel. Link in the description. Let's start from the basic. We have the Smith chart here, and we already understand that looking to this Smith chart, we understand how impedance is transformed along the impedance matching network. So in this example here, we have a 105th ohm resistor. This resistor is right here, and the impedance is transformed by this parallel capacitance. So the impedance here moves over a constant conductance cir circle to this impedance here, and now we are adding here an inductor, so the impedance now moves over the constant resistance circle. This is basic Smith chart, and we can change here the values on the code. Let's see it here. Let's put here 145 ohms, it already updated. And let's change here. Uh, let's try to match it to fifth ohm. So we need to move the impedance right here on the unit circle. So let's try here a smaller capacitor. Let's see, four picofarad, almost there. Let's see here. 3.9 pico. Okay, and now let's increase the inductance. 20 nano, almost there. 22, let's see here, 28. Okay, we are almost matching the 145 ohm resistor to a fifth ohm impedance here. We can see the transformation. And this framework I created here in JavaScript draws the path here on the Smith chart and also draws here a circuit. Remember guys, this is only a prototype and my idea is to improve this system here. We can also draw here constant Q factor lines. So this contour here is the geometrical description of a constant Q. Here on the code, I'm, I'm drawing the Q contour of two, Q of two. And we can see here that this impedance matching network here is inside the Q contour. We have a Q factor that is lower then two. If we try here to, in to increase to one, we're gonna see this the Q factor equals one contour. And we can see right away that this impedance transformation is over 
Q equals 1. And of course, guys, for an LC impedance matching network, we can't change, we can't control the Q factor. But we can increase the order to enlarge the bandwidth. We can increase the order here. Let's duplicate this inductor and let's duplicate the capacitor. And probably now we can match the impedance with a lower Q. Let's try to be inside the Q equals 1 contour here. Let's see what it can do here. Let's try a 2 pico here. Yeah, let's reduce this inductor here, the second inductor. And look at this guys, now we are matched with greater bandwidth because the Q factor of the network is lower. With a higher order network, we can actually control the Q of the matching. Now let's see what gonna happen if we double the frequency. Let's, we are working on 400 megahertz. Let's go to 800 megahertz. This is the second harmonic. And we see that of course the impedance transformation is different. And the final impedance here in the second harmonic of course has a different value. Now we see that this problem of designing matching networks for the fundamental and for other harmonics, for higher harmonics, is a pretty difficult task. It's a pretty difficult analytical task. So my idea was why we cannot use genetic algorithms to fine tune the values of the impedance network to find the correct values trying to optimize a function, a fitness function. And we can see it here guys. This here guys is actually a genetic algorithm fine tuning the values of the capacitors, inductors and the length of this transmission line here to fine tune the impedance at the fundamental is the yellow trace here. This is the final impedance at the fundamental. We are also optimizing the second harmonic impedance is the green dot here. And in the same time, we are actually optimizing the Q factor. We can see that the algorithm is trying to be inside the Q contour here. We can run it again. It's probably gonna find a different solution. And we see that it's trying to optimize the second harmonic impedance, the fundamental impedance, and it's trying to be inside the Q contour here. It is working. This is a genetic evolution algorithm fine-tuning the impedance matching nature. And how this works, guys? We are actually defining a cost function that the genetic algorithm is trying to minimize. So we can see here, let me open the function here, cost mean square error cost function guys so actually we have target impedance so this is the real part of the fundamental 9 ohms this is the imaginary part so an inductive reactance of 2 ohms this is the q factor 3 and this is the impedance in the second harmonic we have a real impedance of 0 this is for a class j design we need only a capacitive reactance at the second harmonic. This is the idea here. So the imaginary part of the second harmonic here is negative 3, a capacitive reactance. And actually the cost function, we can see it here, is calculating the error of the computed network from the target values we want. Having an error function, the genetic algorithm can optimize the values trying to reduce this error. And if we are trying to reduce the error of the cost function, we are actually step by step approximating the network to the final result where the cost function is lower. We can actually change here the, the network. Let's, let's try to change the network here. Let's remove the, let's remove one section here. We see that we remove the section. Now we have a pi network capacitor, inductor, capacitor, and the genetic algorithm is trying to find the correct solution. And you can see that it actually found a very good solution here. Look at these guys, pretty good. We have the capacitive reactance here in the second harmonic, and you have the correct impedance here in the fundamental. One pretty nice thing about this kind of optimization is that we can have fixed values that the algorithm cannot change. So actually we can embed the parasitics of devices here. So the genetic algorithm is tuning the network over the parasitics of the devices or parts of the circuit. We can model an LDMOS MOSFET here with a fixed capacitor that is the drain source capacitance of the LDMOS and a series inductance that is the package inductance of the LDMOS. So guys, let's make the first capacitor fixed changing here. Let's make the first inductor fixed. 
So this capacitance here now is the drain source capacitance of the LDMOS. This is the package inductance of the LDMOS. And let's add a transmission line to make part of the impedance matching network. Let's see. Let's place two nano Henry for the package inductance here. Here, two nano Henry. So the first capacitor is the drain source capacitance, 10 pico. The inductance is the package inductance. And of course, guys, we can add another capacitor. So these three parts here, the capacitor, the transmission line, and the other capacitor, the genetic algorithm can tune to make the impedance matching network and we see that it's working guys take a look at these guys <laughs> the genetic algorithm found a solution in this case <laughs> this is amazing guys let's see if the drain source capacitance is lower three pico let's see oops i changed the wrong capacitor this one here look at this guys but now it ha it's having a very hard time generating the impedance for the second harmonic. We see that it's having a hard time and this is pretty interesting guys because the first capacitor here, the drain source capacitance is fixed. So it's having a very hard time, it's actually not able to generate the second harmonic impedance we need in the design. It cannot generate. This is a very interesting situation where we probably need to use a lower frequency device that has more capacitance here in the drain source so we can actually create a class j amplifier let's turn back to 10 pico and now it is able to generate the second harmonic impedance here very beautiful guys this is pretty nice pretty nice guys take a look at this so guys what do you think about this idea thank you for watching you can have access to these simulation files here becoming a patron of the channel link on the description leave a comment about your opinion and about ideas for this simulator here i'm creating don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i see you in the next video of our electronics